Poplar borers are a pest that we see boring into the stems of poplars and trembling aspen, but also attacking willow trees. They tend to attack trees that are in open growing or those that are on the edges of bluffs. It's been suggested that they attack stressed or weakened host trees, those that have been stressed through drought or defoliation, sun scald, or those that have been partially cut, but they can also attack healthy trees. The poplar borer has a long life cycle, typically needing four years to complete development, and, but this can vary by a year or so either way. Adult beetles are about 25 millimeters long and have antennae that are similar length, so they have very long antennae. They're a mainly a gray colored beetle with some faint yellow stripes and small brown spots. The adults emerge in late June and July and live for about six weeks at which time they feed on foliage and start laying eggs within about a week of their emergence. The females cut crescent-shaped holes or notches or punctures in the bark and deposit one to two creamy white eggs in each notch. They tend to lay eggs in exposed parts of the trunk and on the lower crown. Eggs hatch within about three weeks and to form a grub-like legless creamy white larvae that have brown head and a brown thoracic shield. They can reach about 40 millimeters in length when full-sized. First-year larvae feed on the inner bark, feeding from the time that they hatch until about October, at which time they hibernate in the burrows. Second-year larvae start feeding in late April, boring through the sapwood into the heart of the tree. Second- and third-year larvae will eject the sawdust from their burrow, which is observed outside the hole, and that's a sign that the tree is infested. Second year larvae overwinter in a cell of tightly packed frass or poop within the burrow. Third year larvae start feeding in April, similar to the second year, but they stop feeding in August to build a hibernation cell where they'll spend the winter as a pre-pupae. In mid-May of the fourth year, pupation starts, and then the adults will emerge in late June and July of that year with the full cycle complete. Trees aren't usually killed by the poplar borer, but trunks can be weakened by tunneling and may snap in windstorms. Infested trees are often attacked repeatedly. As the next generation emerges, it tends to lay its eggs on the, on the same tree. So you get these brood trees that develop. Infested trees often exude copious amounts of a varnish-like sap which runs down the trunk of the tree, staining the surface of the bark, which is a very distinctive sign of infestation. The sawdust that it, that's expelled by the um, burrowing larvae is also a very distinctive symptom. You'll see woodpeckers feeding on trees, and that can cause both uh, more damage to the tree, but it'll also reduce the amount of larvae that are there, potentially. So it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. The open holes that the larvae maintain to expel that sawdust can become infected and harbor a rot fungus, which can damage the tree further. When it comes to management of this particular pest, it's difficult for most people to do. There isn't a whole lot of things that people can do. You can try to poke the larvae with a fine gauged wire by threading that up into the burrows, but it can be as much as 25 centimeters deep, so that can be a bit of a challenge to get them. What you're trying to do is poke the larvae and kill them. You can apply insecticides when the adults are active and try to um, control and prevent them from laying eggs to further th the generations. You can also potentially contact shallower larvae with an insecticide and, and kill them that way. The best thing you can do is encourage healthy growth of the tree, which helps them sort of weather the storm of the infestation. You may also need to remove any infested trees. If a tree is very infected, it may just need to be taken out to prevent it um, from sort of spreading out into other areas.